Okay, so are we recording? Yes, I think we are. Yay! So, what I want to do today is do a little short video um, that sort of sprung into my mind yesterday when I was talking to one of my patrons who will remain nameless. Uh, it won't be Malcolm. Um, who was having problems uh, following a video of mine um, on YouTube um, because he couldn't find a particular tool in the Photoshop toolbar. So what I want to do today is just sort of do a little video on customising the Photoshop workspace and customising the toolbar. So if we sort of scoot over onto the machine here and uh, yeah here's my one of my favorite pictures from when i was in iceland with mr malcolm yes and over here we have our main panels that we use in photoshop uh, but yours might not look like that and over here we have our toolbar and if you look very carefully at the top of the toolbar underneath this um, dark bar we've just got two light bars one over the top or well, slightly lighter bars they still look dark and um, if we just grab those we can actually pull the toolbar out now of course obviously nobody wants it in the middle of their image um, but we'll just leave it there for the time being because before we go on to this, the, the customising the toolbar, um, I just want to take a moment to talk about the workspace. Now, by default, Lightroom usually comes loaded because if we come up to the top right-hand corner, um, we can see we've got this little workspace selection dialogue here. And as far as I'm aware it usually defaults to what you call the essentials workspace which is that uh, i think i'm right in saying because i haven't had well this is the thing about photoshop and um, once you customize it and you save your workspace and your toolbar every time photoshop updates in theory it should always keep the same workspace and toolbar layout and uh, so it's sort of a long time since I've seen the defaults of uh, Photoshop. But the one thing I will say to you is that um, there's many different um, layouts or workspaces depending on what it is that you're doing. I mean, if we go and click on 3D, now here we've got a workspace which is suitable for 3d work which i haven't got a clue about so obviously i'll never use that and then you know if we go for painting yeah there we've got our swatches and different brushes and media types for the brushes so it all depends on what you're doing um because don't forget it's not just photographers who use photoshop so we could come to the photography um, panel and yeah it looks pretty much the same but all I'm going to do is show you how to customize workspace because we'll just reset it back to the default essentials there are many many things in Photoshop that you will never use as a photographer and I don't like being greeted by stuff i'll never use to me it's just too much useless information so we've got libraries so i'll drag this over here and i will just close it by clicking the little cross and um, we've got color and we've got swatches i don't really need either of those so i'm just going to delete them rather like that now we're left with properties and adjustments at the top now adjustments these are our adjustment layers our non-destructive adjustment layers now some people will actually get rid of that because you can also apply adjustment layers from here this little icon down here at the bottom of the layers panel 
but I can't be bothered going down there 99 percent of the time so I use out of personal preference um, the adjustments panel itself but of course I have it docked with the properties and if we've got a dialog box open here or a panel I should say um, we can drag it over and just when you see it go blue like that you can drop it so the properties and the adjustments are in the same panel on different tabs and that's just the way I like it because my adjustment layers invariably have a mask on them and I can control the properties of the mask from inside the properties panel when there's a mask active there isn't one active now so you can't see the mask properties um, but anyway there we go so what else do I want to see over here so if I come to window I always want to be able to gain access to my history but my history is over here already in this little sidebar so I can pull my history out but obviously I've got no history in there so I could actually put my history in there or where I like to keep it yeah is over just docked in the side here like that but then I like to keep all this lot closed down so I've got my um, history there and we can then go to a window and I want to always be able to see my info so I will put my info over here and uh, yeah that's right so I'll close that down and of course I'm going to drag my history back into here um, but I won't I'll actually put my info in another panel I think and um, so we've got info if I drop it there so that panel is all lit up blue it will drop in as a separate tab next to properties and adjustments I don't want it there so all I'm going to do is just release the info panel and then lift it up until I get a horizontal blue line like that and then you can see I actually make a new panel group alrighty so that's looking good just how I want to see it and um, what else do I want to see in there um histogram yeah i always want to see my histogram and you'll notice histogram comes in with navigator so i'm just going to put both of them in there rather like that and default it to the info view and so that is all i have as my workspace panel arrangement so if you want to go and create your own you can create it just like i've shown you um, but you can then go to create so say new workspace and you can save that as your own customized workspace I'm just going to set it back to my normal default which is Andy's workspace and now you can see that in here I have my history I also have my actions I also have a couple of um, text uh, panels one for character and one for paragraph adjustments that's just because I make the um, oh what do you call it the thumbnails for my videos on YouTube and I have a tendency to vary the size of the text and the indentations so that's why those are there and um, this is Jimmy McIntyre's um, easy panel 2 which is free and it's just basically a, a simple straightforward luminosity masking uh, panel rather like Greg Benzi's Lumenzia and um, we will now come close that out because I don't really want to see it um, I've also got my Greg Benzi's basics and we'll shut that down and we've also got the main Lumenzia now of course Lumenzia you can put in its own panel group as you can or put in another panel group so you can have it over here permanently um, open if you like but seeing as I don't use it all the time yeah I just bring it in and drop it into this little vertical sidebar here so really and truly I think I've covered the essentials of what you need to know about panels in your workspace and how you can order them and just use what you want or just see what you want 
um, just because you've deleted them I mean if we go to window what did I delete I deleted swatches but I didn't delete it it's there yeah all I did was hide it so I don't want to see it so I can click on there and just close tab group and so I can't see it anymore but it is still there should the need ever god forbid arise when I actually needed to use it so now we come to the toolbar okay so if your toolbar is docked over here just for ease of use you can just pull it out like that by grabbing hold of these two little dark marks as I mentioned before okay so if we go to now where is it is it file no it's under edit and we come down to toolbar and now we get this rather strange customized toolbar dialog box and people sort of get a bit mixed up over this and there's no real need so i'm going to go restore defaults yeah and this may well be what your toolbar looks like in Photoshop. And you can see we've got one or two of these um, different tools. And you can see they have little um, arrows in the bottom left or oh, bottom right hand corner. So if I right click and click on an arrow, um, I need to um, just close that. Um, if I right click and on that little arrow there in the bottom right hand corner, you can see I've got all the tools that are available to me on this actual main tool. And I've actually sorted these. We haven't, I, I don't actually have many tool options uh, because I don't need them but we'll go to um again to image toolbar and we'll go reset so we'll go restore to defaults and i'll click done so this is the sort of default toolbar yours might be slightly squatter and have two columns in it but either or this will be your general toolbar layout by default in photoshop so we've got these little um as i said these little corner arrows and you can see we've got three different options in there and of course we can go and pick any one of them to actually change the tool over um i'll go back to the lasso tool but i've got tools in here that i'll never use not really and so again i don't want to have to wade through tools that i'll never use I don't want tools I'll never use to come up as options uh, because it just clutters my head because I've got to think, what the hell's that? So I don't really want to see them. So what we're going to do is go edit uh, toolbar and we're going to change the toolbar. And we have this um, empty space over here on the right called extra tools. Now, you don't want to delete your tools you just want to hide them you want to hide those that you will never use but you want to hide them in a place where you can find them should their use be required so you can see on the move tool which is this one here i've got two options i've got the move tool or i've got the artboard tool i can't get my head around artboards so they're totally irrelevant my son Richard uses them all the time but it's, it's a relatively new thing and it drives me mad I don't need to see it so I can just grab it and move it over to the extra tools now you'll notice that I have no longer got that little downwards pointing arrow in the bottom right hand corner of the move tool option because it's only got one thing on it it's just got the move tool and the other tool is in a extras box which I can pull up by clicking down here should the need arise so the next tool we've got is the rectangular marquee tool do I actually need the rectangular marquee tool 
yeah, I always keep the rectangular mar marquee tool. But here's the thing. What I can do now, because I don't want to see the options on the rectangular marquee tool, I can highlight the rectangular marquee tool and just move it up until I get that blue line and I can separate it out from all the other tools. I never really need the elliptical marquee tool or the single row or the single column. So all of these I can put over into my extras. So now you can see I've now freed up quite a bit of space on my toolbar. I'm just pulling out my essential tools. Lasso tool. We always want to see the lasso tool. But I don't really ever want to have any use or I don't really want, ever want to see either the polygonal lasso tool or the magnetic lasso tool. I don't need them, so I don't need to see them. Quick selection tool, I'll keep. Magic wand tool, I'll keep because it's sometimes useful. All right. Crop tool, always useful, but I don't need to see the perspective crop tool, the slice tool, or the slice select tool. So, here we are, we can see we've got all those options available to us because we've got this little downwards pointing arrow in the right hand corner so I'm going to lift the crop tool out and then move the perspective slice and slice select tools over into extras so now this toolbar is looking a lot cleaner frame tool never need the frame tool so we'll get rid of that eyedropper tool I quite frequently use that and I use the color sampler tool sometimes but I never use the 3D material tool, I never use the note tool, and I never use the count tool. Spot healing brush and healing brush is where some people come unstuck because whatever tool you've got is showing here is the one you last used. And when you load Photoshop for the very, very first time, it installs, um, because where are we? Uh, the spot healing brush deactivated. The one that is active is the healing brush. So quite often, I get people sending me an email or a text message or whatever. Andy, I can't find my spot healing tool. So, I have my spot healing tool and my healing brush separate. And I have my patch tool separate. I'll put the content aware move tool separate, but I never use it. But I certainly don't want any red eye reduction. I have my brush tool. I always need my brush tool, but I never use the pencil. I never use the color replacement, and I never use the mixer brush. I always want to see my clone stamp tool, but I never want to see my pattern stamp tool. I never use my history brush, and I never use my art, art history brush. I very, very rarely use the eraser, but I'll keep it there. Background eraser tool I don't use. Magic eraser tool I don't use. I want to see my gradient tool, and I want to see my paint bucket tool separately. So I pull out my gradient tool, I pull out my paint bucket tool to run them as separates, or show them as separates but then I don't want the 3D material drop tool. I always like to see my blur tool. I hate using the sharpening tool, so I never use it because it's crap. I always want to see my smudge tool because it comes in handy when you're doing high magnification, very delicate retouching. It can come in handy. And I always want to see my dodge tool and I want to see my burn tool. Do I ever want to see my sponge tool? Again, sometimes can come in very handy for very high magnification retouching, though it's, I very rarely use it. The pen tool, I keep all its options. Um, the type tool, I want horizontal type or vertical type and all the others can stay on a multiple choice tool. So I've now got my horizontal type tool here 
and the vertical type tool with all its other options just on there and rectangular marquee tool or the rectangle tool round rectangle tool ellipse tool polygon tool line tool custom shape tool i just leave those down here as default and i always want to see my hand tool but i want that separate and i don't ever need to see me rotate view tool so i'll put that over there and so there is my normal customized toolbar and we can go to save preset and we could give it you see i've got andy's toolbar and andy's toolbar two uh, we could go and call this andy's toolbar three yeah because all three of them all look the same so we click save and then we can go and click done and then we can pull just grab hold of these two little dark bars here pull push over by the ruler get the blue lines up the side let go and now our toolbar is docked and that ladies and gentlemen is how i customize photoshop i hope that's proved useful to you and i'll see you again in the next video Toodoo.